Hello, I'm Ram Shiva Kumar. I'm a professor, speaker, and angel investor. I've been teaching economics and strategy at the Booth School of Business at the University of Chicago for 22 years. My video today, An Insider's Guide to an American MBA, is inspired by the conversations I've had over the years with prospective MBA students from India, China, and other countries. Here are the eight things that you should know about a full-time MBA program in America. Let me start by answering the first question that I'm often asked. Is an American MBA worth it? The short answer is, it depends. It depends as much on you as on the business school that you plan to attend. Getting a strong return on your investment of time and money will depend on your age, prior education, work experience, ambitions, and the chances that you're willing to take. There are more than 200 business schools in America that offer a full-time MBA. And there is considerable variation across these business schools in their reputations, resources, and student placement capabilities. You can't go wrong studying at any of the top 10 MBA programs. Each has a global student body exceptional faculty, large endowments, influential alumni, and excellent placement. MBA programs ranked 11 through 25 are strong programs. They have excellent faculty, a strong curriculum, and good placement records. What separates the MBA programs ranked outside of the top 25 from the top 25 is that their career and student services are not as strong as those that are ranked in the top 25. Moreover, their influence tends to be regional rather than national. You should conduct a careful cost-benefit analysis if you're considering a full-time MBA program that is ranked outside of the top 50. A recent study by the consulting firm Payscale found that the value of an American MBA from a top 50 business school defined as the lifetime earnings premium is approximately $2.3 million. The higher rank the MBA program, the greater is the lifetime earnings premium. Second, let me turn to the question on the minds of many prospective students. What does it take to get into an elite MBA program? Yes, your undergraduate academic credentials matter a lot, as do your GMAT or GRE scores, as well as your record outside of the classroom. Getting into an elite MBA program is hard. Indeed, getting in is likely harder than anything you will encounter while you are in that MBA program. At Booth, 4,184 students applied for admission to the full-time MBA program in autumn 2023. Only 637 students were admitted, roughly one in six applicants. 64% of admits were American citizens or permanent residents. 17% were from Asia, 11% from Central and South America, and 3% from Africa. Because this distribution is unlikely to change a lot in the near term, you have to have a stronger app application than someone from your own country or region. With regards to academic credentials, admissions officers at MBA programs start by scrutinizing academic records and GMAT scores. At Booth, the average undergraduate GPA for the class of 2025 was 3.64 on a 4.0 scale while the average GMAT score was 728. Of course, these are averages, so there are many admits whose scores fall below these levels. But remember this, you have to have a strong record outside of the classroom if your academic record is not so strong. By outside of the classroom, I mean your work experience, as well as your experiences outside of work, such as in sport, music, the arts, volunteering, and more. Your letters of recommendation and your personal essay count a great deal. You should ask your managers and supervisors, current and former, to write a letter for you. What matters in these letters are insights on your temperament and character, 
as much as statements on your intelligence and competence. Your personal essay is a months long project, so start early. I recommend that you employ an experienced MBA consultant to help you tell your story with clarity and authenticity. Third, international students should know that English language skills, especially your speaking skills, will matter a lot. By this, I don't mean your accent or your vocabulary, but your ability to express your ideas logically, concisely, and precisely. It is not uncommon for international students to have a telephone or video interview with a current student, a former student, or an admissions officer. And they will judge you by your ability to hold a conversation. If English is not your first language, and you feel uncomfortable speaking in it, I recommend that you work with a coach or guide. Fourth, the curriculum of American MBA programs places a great deal of emphasis on real life problem solving. Today's MBA students are expected to combine quantitative skills with knowledge of ideas, concepts and methods from sociology, psychology, history, economics and more. At Booth, the only required courses today are the three foundations courses, microeconomics, financial accounting, and statistics. Students can choose their next 17 courses from a menu of 150 courses. To give you a sense of the range of choice available to the Booth student today, let me read out the titles of a few popular courses. Designing a Good Life with Nick Epley. Behavioral Economics with Devin Pope, Blockchain, Cryptocurrencies and Web 3.0 with Anoop Malani, Storytelling and Narratives in Business with Guy Rolnick, Healthcare Business Analytics with Dan Edelman, Artificial Intelligence with Sendil Mulainathan. Fifth, the learning model in an MBA program is distinct from anything most international students will have experienced before. Rote memorization is of little value. Substantial preparation is required before one arrives in each class. Professors lecture less and engage students more. Engagement is sometimes one-on-one -on -one and sometimes with a group. Case discussions teach students to make choices without having all the information. That keeping an open mind is vital and that there is an art to persuasion. The real value of cases is in the process of discovering the right questions and answers. Sixth, your MBA network can be your most powerful asset. For instance, at any given time, there are almost 1,250 full-time students at Booth. Of course, you can't befriend everyone, but you can be an acquaintance to many. And there are numerous opportunities to befriend others in class, in professional clubs, in weekly socials, in school trips, and more. Anecdotal and empirical evidence show that business school networks are powerful. People often turn to their MBA networks when looking for a job or looking to hire someone, when raising capital, when looking for business partners, and when looking for information on products, technologies, companies, and people. Indeed, so powerful are business networks that many an MBA student has found a life partner through them. Seventh, carefully review placement statistics at every full-time MBA program that you plan to apply to. You want to know the answers to these questions. What fraction of international students was offered a job upon graduation? And what fraction had accepted a job upon graduation? What were the top industries and geographies in which international students had accepted job offers? Which companies were the biggest employers of international students? And what was the range of compensation for international students? The graduating class of 2023 at Chicago Booth had 244 international students. 95% of those searching for a job had received an offer at graduation and 90% had accepted an offer at graduation. Almost 40% accepted jobs at consulting companies, 15% in banking, 9% in technology companies, and 8% in private equity. 
McKinsey, BCG, Bain, Goldman Sachs, and Amazon were the biggest employers of 2023 graduates. The range of annual salaries offered to international students was $70,000 on the lower end and $225,000 on the higher end. The median annual compensation was $175,000. Eighth, check for whether the MBA program you're applying to is STEM designated. Less than a third of all full-time MBA programs are. International students with a STEM designated MBA can work for up to three years in America on their student visas post MBA. The three years of work experience gives candidates greater opportunities to secure the H-1B visa that is a path to US residency. So let me close with a summary of my eight points. Point one, a full-time MBA in America at the right business school may be the best investment of time and money you will ever make. Point two, while your grades and GMAT scores matter, your personal essay and your letters of recommendation are where you have the opportunity to differentiate yourself. Point three, your aim should be to have an easy conversation in English with people from across the world on a range of topics. Point four, today's MBA programs aim for range as much as depth of knowledge and skills. Point five, the American MBA program is designed to help students become comfortable with decision-making under ambiguity, uncertainty, and noise. Point six, your MBA student network will be your biggest asset. Point seven, review each MBA program's placement record carefully. And point eight, a STEM designated MBA gives international students more time to work under a student visa while transitioning to a temporary work visa.